Well, this video today will be about an unboxing and that is something pretty special. Uh, please excuse the crudity of my voice right now. I had my wisdom teeth pulled and uh, yeah, I'm suffering from that a little bit. Everything hurts and uh, talking isn't that easy. Well, here is the box. I already opened it just to make sure that uh, not, no papers in there that made, might give the seller away. This was a little bit more on the expensive side when it comes to uh, old computers. But um, I'm pretty happy about it. Let's have a look what this could be. Well, hmm, definitely looking at this thing first glance, we already can see this is an Amiga. And uh, as an auto fashion we know, this is an Amiga 500. Doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit dirty and so on. But yeah, definitely has been opened. Seems like the seller didn't really know how to put it back together. Also the keyboard isn't really in place. Yep, it's a little bit of weird stuff going on in here. But there is something very, very special about this machine, and that's what I'm going to show you. I have no idea if this machine works, if anything uh, really is installed that shouldn't be in there. It's really heavy in comparison to my other Amiga, so there might be some goodies in here hidden away. But uh, let's have a look at the keyboard itself, actually. We have the regular Amiga keyboard, somehow the LED up there slipped. And then over here we go down and down and BAM! Look at that! We have got the Commodore logo on the keyboard of the Amiga. And this, as you can probably already tell, for all the Amiga aficionados is quite a rare unit. I don't know exactly how rare it is, maybe uh, this was the so far as I know, the absolute first Amiga 500 that was ever sold. Well, the first revision of the of Amiga itself. And Commodore added the their logo on the whole thing instead of the Amiga logo. Because if we take a look at the newer models, we have a different Amiga logo. And we have another Amiga logo next to the Alt key. But here? Nope. And that's what makes this machine truly special. It's quite rare actually to find one of these. And they are also pretty expensive. I paid... Well, I'm gonna say not that much for it, since I don't know its current condition and the way it has been treated while opening. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. So I got it a little bit cheaper on that side. But the nice thing about the whole unit is, again, we have got a rare machine in here. That is awesome. Let's have a look inside on what uh, what makes it so heavy, or if I'm just imagining myself that. And also see if the whole thing actually works. Well, the Amiga did work. I did hook it up to the TV and it switched on nicely as it should. But then suddenly it switched itself off. Hmm. No idea why, but I can't get it to switch on, on anymore right now. And uh, what I could already tell is I we have a Kickstart 1.2 in here and judging from the fact that this is one of the first units that they sold that should be quite normal here's something weird I just noticed somebody has uh, smashed that capacitor hmm seems like I have to install a new one yeah not too big of an issue to do that but there's also quite some interesting stuff going on here we take a look at the uh, Gary chip here. Uh, so far as I know, this is the chip that does all the floppy handling. I'm not quite sure about that. You uh, may correct me on that, or if it just is doing something something completely different. Because uh, well, first of all, we have got a PC floppy drive in here. This is not an uh, Amiga floppy drive. You can already tell by the way the whole thing looks and the front of it. Also, that the uh, plastic has been cut away. That's a PC floppy drive, not an Amiga floppy drive. It did work. That's a good thing about it. So the whole Amiga does actually do something. 
But then there is this, we have got this small circuit board below the uh, garage chip. And before that actually goes into its real socket. And then there is this cable going all the way over here into the expansion memory. Oh, I have no idea what's going on here. I couldn't get into a workbench so far. Um, yeah, if this is more than uh, 512 kilobytes of RAM, I don't know. It's also this uh, weird type of RAM. I, I myself haven't seen uh, this type of RAM before. There sure is some weird stuff going on in here, and that is definitely out of a PC, this cable. That does not belong to an, an Amiga, but well, if it works, there's nothing to worry about it. So, well, and the reason why I believe I can't get this Amiga to power up anymore is the power connector here. If I take the cable and insert it, just look at how much that thing moves. Look at it. So there has definitely gotten something loose in here. It did switch on and off a multiple times after each other after that. And after that I couldn't get it to switch on anymore. So I'll have to take the board out and uh, see what could be causing that. Unless I'm still pretty curious on finding out what exactly uh, all this here is. The battery still is, well, almost okay. I still I seem it's just starting about to leak again. A little bit has already dropped on the socket board, but uh, that can still be removed fairly easily. I'm going to show you that again. And uh, I did have a Kickstart 3.1 chip lying somewhere around here, and I would like to try out uh, putting that in this machine and see if it works, because, well, we've got a 6A revision, which uh, I think is pretty weird for, for well, judging from uh, the fact that this should actually be a lot older machines due to the uh, uh, Commodore logo on the keyboard, but uh, hmm, maybe the board has been swapped out. I don't know what the previous owner has done with this machine. I'm just surprised that the whole thing does actually work. And uh, yeah, well, that's actually all that is necessary, that this thing works for me. And well, fixing it uh, also won't be too much of an issue. As I already said, this thing here, well, this just wobbles around a lot, so there definitely are some loose solder joints in that. And I also would like to have a look at the bottom side of the motherboard and just see what's going on there. Also, yeah, dust. I'm pretty sure when I get rid of that. Well, I have taken the Amiga out of its uh, case and everything, and uh, I've discovered something not that good. The whole thing has got quite a water damage in its uh, in here. So uh, it seems like some water has been running over this whole unit. And yeah, judging from all the rust that I've got on this whole thing. Uh, I'm definitely going to contact the seller and say that I do not find that okay. Why there is so much rust in here and the amount of money I paid is a little bit overkill for that. Although it did work, so the Amiga is definitely somehow operational. I don't know... Uh, Oh, I ju now just stop working. It seems to have something to do with the power connector. Uh, definitely my power connector here is okay, so it can't be that. Hmm, seems like I have to figure that out. And also, well, uh, this chip is getting really, really hot. So um, if I manage to get into workbench, I'm definitely going to try out what uh, is the purpose of all this. Maybe that is one megabyte of RAM or more, I don't know, this thing. And uh, see what happens in the worst case scenario. I just put that in my Amiga 500, uh, 500 plus and there shouldn't be any issue. But this uh, isn't looking too good in here. Yeah, definitely. First of all, I'm going to resolder everything on this whole thing, on this connector, and uh, see if that does an improvement. Also, I'm going to resocket all of the chips in here. Well, even without all the mods, uh, this thing still doesn't really want to work. I have resocketed everything, I have removed the processor, I have put it back in, powered the whole thing up, nope. 
So uh, the only thing that could be causing this, which I'm thinking is either we have a dead processor because this, well, it gets really, really, really hot. This thing also got pretty hot and well, hmm, I don't know. Uh, what's doing this? Sometimes I get some sound when I press down here on one of the RAM chips, so I'm gonna check those if they are all uh, nicely soldered in there. Just gonna go over all of those with the soldering iron. But before I do that I'm going to put the whole thing into the fridge and see if that causes uh, anything. After that I'm going to put it on the heater while it's warm and see if anything happens because well if it's a capacitor something has got to change during temperature and this thing was pretty cold when I first got it so mm, I don't know I'll just try anything out I have another revision 6a motherboard here and just in comparison well everything looks pretty much identical except for the fact that we've got a 1.3 kickstart in this one and here we don't and some of the chips are a little bit different but uh, yeah, that should not be causing that issue. Hmm. Also, this chip misses a leg. Uh, I'm going to put a mod wire around that and just uh, make sure that it makes really good contact. And uh, yeah, see what happens. Oh, I just gotta replace all the capacitors in this thing. Well, it seems my thought was right. I took out the processor out of that machine and replaced it with a different processor. It doesn't get hot, well it gets warm, but it doesn't get really hot. A little bit of warmth, I'm gonna leave that now for a couple of minutes and check on that uh, the whole time. And uh, yeah, I took that out, took the process of our working Amiga that I knew it was fully operational and put it in here. And guess what? This thing is definitely dead. So it's definitely the processor that's uh, broken and uh, the rest of the Amiga seems to be okay. Well. At least for the missing uh, leg on Gary, and uh, yeah, all the bad capacitors. Nope, it doesn't get hot. It just does not get warm. Just get a little bit warm. Normally I had this thing on for uh, about 30 seconds, and this thing was almost, well, I also used some contact cleaner here, and it just started to evaporate after like 10 seconds, so... Uh, yeah, the, the processor is definitely dead, so, um, yeah, time to get a new processor and uh, put this one here back in its, uh, to the Amiga. Luckily I found one for 9 euros on eBay, and uh, I'll get myself that one. Okay. So at least I know what's wrong with this thing. Well, after that it still didn't really want it to work, but, um... Turns out it was because of the Gary chip, because that isn't connected to ground, so I just done that ugly mod there. I could have done a lot cleaner, but uh, that wasn't really possible. So, anyways, yeah. Uh, there's definitely still a lot of more work to do before this thing can really count as operational. I have just put in a Amiga compatible floppy drive, you can see the one wire in there, that's one that's hacked, did that video about with this thing. And yeah, that works! But what doesn't seem to work anymore is uh, my adapter for video. Either the Amiga has fried it, I don't know, because I'm just getting lines on this. Let me show you if I can plug that all in here. Because it did work uh, the first time I powered this thing up, so somehow the I don't know how uh, the processor died or whatever. This thing is definitely not operational anymore. Yeah, there is definitely a lot more wrong in this whole thing than uh, it looks right now. And now it's just on the edge of being well, barely operational. And uh, I'll definitely have to do all those capacitors in here, especially this one already, for time I mention it. Can't get that cable out. 
There we go. Come on, let me the video out. And this way we've got a good connection and power everything back on. Ah, no. Everything seems to be okay now. So I just had a bad connection before. Yeah. So well, this Amiga is definitely fixed. I'm gonna try and figure out what the hell this thing does. So far as I know, it allows me to use PC floppy drives in the Amiga. I don't know if that's really necessary. Well, I don't really need it. Maybe it could be useful for the uh, ah, the 2000 they used. Maybe the 2000 even, I'm not quite sure. Gotta try that out. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Definitely don't need, going to do another uh, mod wire to that. That doesn't look very nice. So yeah, this Amiga seems so far to be fixed. Well, I can only hope everything stays operational as it is now. Gonna try what this uh, RAM here does. And uh, yeah. And well, what might be the best way of fixing a uh, broken processor? Well, opening it. Hmm, but I can't get uh, it any more open than this. So... I'll have a quick go at something completely different. For that I have to make sure I don't hit anybody accidentally. I just, yep, you guessed it, throwing it off my balcony. Let's see if we have done some damage. Wow, these things are tough. Nothing more than a small scratch here and some cracks in the chip. But that survived the fourth. That's impressive. Onto complete rock hard concrete floor. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the hammer onto this thing. And after some smacks with the hammer. Well, yep, that's how you dispose a processor correctly. Well, a dead processor, of course. This one is dead, there is no way of fixing it. And judging from the fact how it looks, yeah, they, this thing has got a lot of thermal stress and there's no way I could ever have gotten this thing to work again. Well, anyways, thank you for watching and goodbye.